Hey everybody, it's Betsy. You're gonna need some paper, a pencil, maybe an eraser or a kneading eraser like the one I'm smushing around right now. We're going to be drawing King Boo in a pirate ship, which looks like this. And we're going to start off with a circle kind of at the bottom of your paper and maybe about four inches in diameter if you have a ruler handy or if you want to guesstimate, it's about the size of maybe a baseball. You can see I'm going around a lot, a lot of times, back and forth. Spin your paper and you might be able to see where your circle is turning into an oval and you can add or subtract to get it a little bit more circular. And then you can come back in with one of those big erasers since your eraser on your pencil is a little small and it might take more time to get rid of any of the lines you don't want. Keep in mind we're drawing very very lightly so it's easy to erase. Sometimes I have to draw a little bit more dark, wee, darker, so that it'll show up on camera but when I'm drawing by myself at home I usually draw very very lightly to the point you almost can't see it just to keep everything very light and easy to erase. Next, we're going to cut off the top of this sphere with an oval and erase what we don't need. Could we have just started with this oval and then drawn the bottom? Yeah, but sometimes the bottom curve won't be as accurate if you try to connect it to the oval and it'll be more wonky shaped. So that's why I started with a circle first to try to keep it nice and accurate. Next, there's that part of the ship, I don't actually know what it's called, maybe I'll put it in text right now. That pointy part of the ship, usually there's like a mermaid or a unicorn or something underneath uh, this part of the ship, and it has three sections. This first section is going to be the thickest, and we'll put another oval right on the end here. Sometimes the lines get confusing once you start overlapping shapes like this, so always come back with your eraser right away and just clean up anything that's inside the new shape that you're drawing to kind of get a sense of which shape is overlapping which. Also cleaning up those lines there. The second part has a longer line on the bottom and then a shorter line on the top. So that one's pointing a little bit more into the air. We have another oval on the end there and another curved line there where it's going into our first form. And of course, we'll then come back with our eraser, erase anything on the inside, clean that up. And then we'll have the long pointy part coming out of this section here. We'll put an oval on the end where it's cut off and then round off the base of it as well where it's going into that shape. And again, erase out your shape. And then I'm just going back and making sure all my curves are about the same curviness. If there's one that's too flat or too curvy in comparison with the other, sometimes the forms just look a little bit wonky. So I try to go back and double check those. There's also like a metal stripe around this one, so I'll add a couple more curved lines like that. There's also a metal casing on this section, so I'll add one more line to that part. Next, let's come down here. And actually, no, let's go to the top and we'll add the rim that goes all the way around the top of the Mario, uh, I was going to say of the Mario Kart. Not the Mario Kart, but the Go-Kart. Rounding that off there. Cleaning up the inside. And then. So that's the top 
thickness and now we need the side thickness so that's what this line here is going to be but the side thickness curves around at the end here so that line is going to connect into there and go all the way across whoops my lines are getting a little messy so you just come back erase erase Then there's another piece of wood right in front here that I think holds these side planks together. So we have these two lines for the side thickness. And then one more line for the front thickness. And that'll just meet those lines right at the bottom. Whoops, my camera's getting fuzzy, I don't know why. Clean up my shape. Then we'll add the all-important wheels. We've done this a lot in class. You probably have this process memorized by now, but I'll go through it once more just in case you forgot. We've got an oval. Then we need to make this oval thicker, so we'll add a line on the top, add a line on the bottom, and then add a line on the side. You're basically going for a little bit of a smushed marshmallow kind of a shape here. Erase out anything on the inside so it's not as confusing. So there's your basic shape like caveman wheel. And then to add a little more details, we put an oval on the inside that usually separates the color of the rubber part from the metal part. And some interior details might be an oval in the center and then four rectangles, one on the top, one on the bottom, and one on each side. I'll zoom in closer in case you need a closer look to draw your own wheel. Being a video, you can always pause it whenever I'm going too fast and work on it at your own speed. I'll do that exact same process for the back wheel as well. Then we'll have one more wheel just partially visible on the other side. So my oval is going to be slightly hidden behind the body of the go-kart there. Add your thickness to the bottom, thickness to the top. And since this wheel is facing the other way, we don't have to put as many details on it. There will be a metal part in here though, so we have to add one more oval on the inside. And then we'll just be connecting that to the go-kart with a couple of straight lines and a curve at the end there. You can add those connector pieces to all of the tires if you want. Stick one there, stick one there. And then erase out your shapes wherever you need to, darken your lines wherever you need to. Next there's a metal band that cuts across horizontally. So I'll start off with my first big curve, trying to keep that roundness. It's very easy to accidentally flatten out 
these types of lines, so I'm trying to keep it nice and curved. Right now it's just a stripe and kind of a messy one at that. I'm trying to clean it up here. But to make it look 3D, we have to have it thick on the side. So I added some thickness there. And we're going to add a top line of thickness. Goes all the way across. This part's a little tricky because the lines are curved and they're also very, very close together. So I'm going to work on this section for a bit here until I get it kind of close to what I'm aiming for. Then we'll go ahead and add the thickness to the front as well. So I'm continuing that top thickness right into that piece of wood there. And then the side thickness. Trying to connect up all these shapes smoothly. Next, there's this cannon that sticks out, and it's very easy to kind of skew this cannon, so I thought I'd try plotting it out with a block first. So here's one side of the cannon in block form, and then here's the front of the cannon that'll shoot out the cannonball eventually, and then here's the top of our sort of cube that's sticking out of our go-kart. Once you have that, you're going to place an oval into the front section. That's what I'm going to do next. Here we go. Placing an oval, trying to make it touch all four sides, and then put another oval on the inside. So that's where the cannonball fires. And then we'll go ahead and curve off the corners from the side and the top of the cannon. Like that. Then I can go ahead and erase my guidelines. Don't need those anymore. And then there's a stripe of color right at the muzzle of the cannon here. So I've added one more stripe. There's also a little thickness on the inside and we can darken in the rest like that. And this cannon comes out of like a, like a porthole, sort of. Like there's a flap of wood that has to lift up in order for this cannon to come out. So that's what I'm going to draw next. Following those lines that I had for my guidelines and then adding some thickness with some lines going up. There's the two sides and then coming out of this square hole on the side here. And then the top part of this wood flap. Next, there's this decorative piece of wood here that has a curve across and then a curve on this side. I'll erase out the shape and then it has a stripe of white, so I'm going to go around that outline once more. Next, I'll draw on the seat cushion, and unfortunately, I was a little bit off camera, a little bit out of frame for this part, but I'm essentially drawing some stripes that are diagonal and turning them into sort of overlapping hot dogs. 
after I erase out this portion here, you'll see I'll come back and give it rounded tops. So it's almost like a package of hot dogs right there. That's going to be a red velvet cushion for the driver. Although King Boo kind of hovers above it, so he doesn't need this comfy cushion anyway. But if it was a driver like Mario or Link or Princess Peach, then they would definitely appreciate the comfort, comfort, comfortable seat that we are drawing for them. Part of the cart also goes up to support this cushion, so I'm bringing my line up and around the cushions and then back down. Little side piece there. And then just adjusting my lines to make sure it flows right back into the cart. My line kind of flattened out on that side, so I'm adding my curve back in. And then the steering wheel. I'm going to start with the shaft. Is that, is that what it's called? I don't know. We'll call it the shaft. Starting with the shaft first, and then there's a little oval that's on the shaft for some reason that I don't know. But that oval needs some thickness, and then I realized there's all kinds of shapes in here that needed to overlap and go into one another, so I just erased the whole thing. Ended my shaft, then added my thickness. Then I had to add the bigger oval for the steering wheel, like the part that you actually grab. And that has to have thickness, so we'll do another oval on the inside. Clean up our shapes. You can see I drew my oval right through the shaft just to make sure that my oval was nice and accurate and doesn't get all wonky. Ending my shaft right there, and then we have to connect the steering wheel ring to the shaft with a couple of lines, something like that, maybe. So there's the go-kart so far, very piratey ship looking. And then I'm going to add our character King Boo. He's really easy to draw, his arms are just rounded raindrop shapes going sideways, or you might think of really chubby carrots. One right there like that. The other one is curved around the steering wheel, so it's a little bit harder. You've got a curve coming around like this, and then there's the outside curve, but then I realized, oh, his hand's actually going, or his arm, is going behind the steering wheel, so I erased that one and had the line come out from behind the steering wheel that way, like that. So there's his other arm, and his body plus head is just one big circular shape so I started my circle right in between the arms coming all the way around made them big enough to basically fill up the cart if he were to lower himself down into it really can't make him too big since he is King Boo he is bigger than normal little ghost characters Whoa, brightness. I happen to film these with the lighting from a window, so whenever a cloud passes by and makes it dark and then I come back and film the next section and that cloud has passed, all of a sudden it's super bright again. Sketching out a mouth, you can see it's very close to the circle on the left side and in between his arms. Then he's got four fangs, two large ones on the sides and then two smaller ones in the middle. I round them off a little bit more just so they're not quite so dangerous looking. And then a bump for the tongue. No nose, but he does have two eyes, so we'll make one oval over here and then a skinnier oval. Not shorter, but skinnier over on that side. And the character Boo always has these like worried eyebrows. I'm not really sure why, but it's a trademark look there. And then we'll erase any part of the eye that goes underneath the eyebrow. And then when you're coloring in the eyes, remember to leave that white spot there to make them a little shiny. And since this is King Boo, he needs a crown. So I will draw two lines going a little bit away from one another and then curve on the top. 
lightly. We'll be erasing some of that later. Another guideline is going to go on the inside here. Another curve lightly. This helps me plot out where the triangle points or the cutouts are going to be by putting two dots and then making a point in the middle and then a point to each end just like that. Super easy. Put some jewels for each point on the crown and the ones on the side are going to bump out a little bit so they'll be placed right on the line. And then if you want to, you can add the little boo, like ghost tail in the back. I'm not sure King Boo has it, but I think it's cute, so I put one on. And then I thought I was done, but I'm not, because there was one more detail on the go-kart that looked kind of important to me. It was a nice little design element, so I decided, you know what, let's go back and draw this lantern. And it adds to the piratey ship feel. Here's me trying to figure out where to start. Uh, 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 maybe at the top of the lantern, which had a little oval. And then some diagonal lines on each side. This is like the top of the lantern box. Shorter lines. And then some lines that kind of follow that wood piece that's above the uh, cannon there. And then here's the glass sides. One line in the middle too. Then we're going to take the lines from the top of the lantern and then place them down on the bottom. And then you can just round off the bottom of the lantern there. I'll go back and add a couple of my corner lines, a couple thickness lines, and then just thicken up the edges where the glass meets and connect that lantern into the go-kart. And there we go. Not that hard. And now we can say that our penciling stage is not done because there was one more like metal piece. I think it's just a decorative element on the side here. Some sort of engraved plate of the ship's name or something, I guess. There we go. Now are we done? I think we're done now. I'm gonna zoom out, there we go. So your penciling stage looks something like this. And then next we'll move on to inking. You don't have to have special pens for inking, but felt tip pens work especially well for this sort of uh, drawing process. So I took my kneading eraser and lightly erased all of my lines just by rolling it. It lightens the drawing without actually erasing it. If you don't have a kneading eraser or you just want to keep your pencil drawing the way it is because you're afraid you might mess up when you ink it, you can just tape your drawing with um, some masking tape or you can get scotch tape and kind of stick it to your clothes a couple of times to reduce the stickiness, otherwise it might tear your paper. And you can use that tape to tape it to a window, then tape another clean piece of paper on top and you can actually trace your own drawing that way so that you save your pencil drawing, but then you'll have another one to practice inking with. So this pen that I'm using right now is actually just a writing pen. It's a Papermate Flare, I wanna say. I think it's a flare pen. They have the felt, nip, uh, felt nibs, felt tips. So they give a little bit thicker line. You can ink with a, like a ballpoint pen, but the line is so thin that you'll spend some time just trying to get your lines thicker. But it is possible. When you're inking, try to lift your pen up a lot. Don't try to ink as much as you can in one go because you will lose control of your lines more easily the more you, you try to ink in one, one swoop. So I tried to break it up. I even added a little line on his tongue there. And then up to the crown. You can see some of these, I'm not following my pencil lines. I'm just uh, like adding to or subtracting from with my ink lines. That's something that kind of comes with practice. If you don't feel comfortable inking changes right on the fly, then don't do it. You can just, you know, make your pencil lines cleaner and then you wouldn't have to guess so much when you're inking. I, I'm not a very 
clean pencil are. They usually call pencils being either tight, meaning like there's only one pencil mark that you have to ink, that's being tight, or loose. And you can tell that my types of pencils are very, very loose, where there's like six or seven different lines to choose from. So it's just a matter of personal style, personal workflow. I have a couple friends that do really, really tight pencils to the point where it almost looks inked already. It's just so smooth and so precise. Me, since I studied animation for a long, long time, the emphasis was on, you know, the pose, the clarity, and just trying to get the movement in, and so we used a lot more pencil lines. And then somebody else, theoretically, would come along and have to make sense of all those pencil lines. So you can see right there, I was just hovering my pen, trying to trace where the line would be if it went underneath his hand. Then I could make sure it connected on the other side. In general, you want to have your pen already moving before it touches the paper. If you put your pen down and then move it, you'll end up with these little start and stop spots which aren't a big deal, but they don't look quite as good as if when the uh, line is smooth, like you can see on some of those lines there, I stopped and there's that little dot. I also tried to kind of improvise on some of these um, decorative elements. There's some spikes that go around this part right here that I'm inking right now. And I thought, oh, spikes are easy. I can just add them with my pen. Then I made a mistake. And since it's pen, you can't erase it. So I had to decide, do I want to bring out my correction tape? But if you bring out your correction tape, then when I color it with marker, it's going to look weird. Maybe nobody will notice if I just leave it alone. Or maybe I can just make up a story that, you know, and during one of the races, King Boo crashed his go-kart, and that's why a couple of the spikes look a little wonky. It's up to you, whatever you like. But that's one more um, benefit that tracing gives you, that if you mess up on the inking stage, you can always just trace another one on the window, and then you'll have another one ready to go. Yeah, here's where I start inking the spikes. And yeah, this will be easy, and then I'm like, wait a minute, which way would this one point? That way? And then I know this one points down that way, but this one will point that? Ooh, maybe not at all? Yeah, and they just got a little funny looking. But oh well. It's fine. I still like my drawing. The rest of this is pretty much the same. It'll just be me inking the rest of this drawing, so I think I will go ahead and stop the narration here. I do want to remind you guys that this is the last drawing from Mario Kart, so if you took home your big piece of paper from the art studio where we were making our big grand pre-race, this is your last racer. You're done. Yay! If you did not take home your big piece of paper, when we do eventually return to the studio, you're welcome to get it then and, you know, complete it on your own time. Lucky for you, these are videos now, so you can watch them whenever you like. Um, but otherwise this makes a nice little drawing all by itself too. So this is probably one of my favorite drawings. That's why I kind of saved it for last. I like playing King Boo. He's one of my favorites. So yeah, have fun finishing inking your drawing and coloring. I color it with markers in this video, but if you want to use colored pencils or crayons or whatever else you have, that'll work just fine too. So that's it for now and I will see you next video.